All right, everyone, it's Ross, and I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, a certain groundhog here in Pennsylvania seems to think it's spring. And I have news for this groundhog, it's definitely not spring. And I know a lot of you guys out there in other states are probably thinking, what's with these Pennsylvania people? They must be nuts. Um, how could you believe anything a groundhog says? And I'm here to tell you, in 28 years of living in Pennsylvania, I don't know a single person who actually puts some stock in what a groundhog has to say. In fact, I don't even really know how it works, okay? If it's the, sh the shadow they see it or they don't see it, I don't know. But I'll tell you, uh, I don't like groundhogs. <laughs> and uh, I figure because this groundhog is putting a lot of publicity out there, it's getting a lot of attention, um, I hope to set the record straight for a lot of you guys, give you guys some tips, what to expect, what it's like here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in the next couple months. Um, we're still really far away from spring, you know. Uh, officially, March 20th is about the day that spring begins, um, at least in terms of the, the tilt of the earth. So we still have some time with that. Um, I would say, though, on average, spring does begin here around March 15th. You start to see some spring weather around that time. We can then start to get our, our cool loving crops in the ground. Um, things are going to start waking up sometime around April. Um, we end up getting a lot of things like our, our stone fruits, like our cherries, our peaches, our apricots, for sp specifically the, those apricots, the plums as well. These things start to uh, start budding out, right? They start to swell. I'm not seeing any swelling right now. As mild as people are saying it's been, I haven't seen it here. And that's a great sign. Um, <laughs> a really good sign because we are in early February. If things were to wake up now in early February, we would be in a world of trouble. I wouldn't really be getting many flowers this year, many fruits this year off my stone fruits. Um, you know, we still have two months away from when I would imagine that they will start flowering. So hopefully the ground, it is pretty warm as it is right now. And I would make a good argument that it is spring. At least the conditions I'm standing in, in terms of the ground, in terms of the air temperatures, it feels like spring. Um, you can see things over here that are a good sign of spring is like when your sedum starts coming up. You can see those buds down there, that new growth. Um, I have some, uh, whatever this thing's called, I forget what this, this is chamomile I think, yeah. This is my Roman or German chamomile. We have some flower bulbs coming up right there, I just noticed. Um, as soon as the grass starts putting out a little bit of growth as well, you can see more sedum down there. And if I show you guys the garlic, the alliums are a really good indicator as well. The garlic is starting to grow a little bit further along than it had in the fall. Um, this is a really good sign that the ground has thawed out. Here's my shallots that are sprouting as well. And that now it's spring. Uh, we even have carrots that are putting out some growth. So definitely there's things waking up and doing, even having some activity. We have, we even have some, uh, some strawberries that are putting out new growth. You can see here's a new leaf. That's one of the other indicators of spring. So you could make an argument that the groundhog's right in that it does seem like spring. Um, but I'll tell you this, we just have too much time. We have too much unknown time what's going to happen in February. Historically, it can be very cold in February. And just because some of the stuff is growing now, like the garlic, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to continue to grow. The ground was very likely going to keep it's going to freeze again and it's going to stay frozen hopefully for quite some time. Um, keeping those ground temperatures cooler, that's going to help these trees stay dormant longer. That's really the goal here. I don't want anything waking up. We still have our pruning to do and some of the things that I have to do in the next couple months, we're going to do a, you know, a couple videos on this so stay tuned for this guys. That We're going to do some pruning, especially on the peaches here. Uh, we have to do a lot of pruning on the peaches, all the stone fruits, the apples, the pears, all of our apples back in here are two rows. We have some great pruning to do. 
um, to get that cordon system back in order, but that's actually a bit later in the season in March because we don't want to do that too soon because of desiccation. Uh, we did most of our persimmons already. We have some pears to do some pruning on. We won't prune the pawpaw, they're kind of self pruning. We'll do some pruning maybe on some of these lower growing bushes. Like uh, you have honeyberries and gooseberries and currants and gumi. We'll probably do a little bit of thinning out on those. The kiwi needs to get in order. And then we also have to do a video on the plums that we're espying. I'll show you guys how to espy fruit trees and plums specifically. We'll compare them over here to the peaches. And then once everything is pruned, I want to come in here and do a dormant oil. A couple applications of that, at least one, maybe two or three. And this spray that I'm going to use really keeps that pest pressure down, gets our trees off to a better start, especially if we have any overwintering pests that you may not be able to visibly see, or maybe there's some damage somewhere on here that they're hiding in, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really great idea to get the dormant oil on in the wintertime before things wake up. And I have a horticultural oil that you can use pretty much any time. And I'll be using that as well. But uh, for the most part, as I mentioned, there's, there's not really a whole lot of activity, which is really good. I think that's uh, a big difference here that some people are having in other parts of the country, um, as well as people just in Pennsylvania. People may be thinking because the ground is soft, uh, because we are starting to see some flower bulbs and garlic and things like that, that they may think that spring is coming, but um, I'm hoping that we can delay this for quite some time. Because I don't know what April is going to be like. I don't know what March is going to be like. Um, I will tell you this. Another thing we're going to be doing this weekend coming up is getting this cold frame back in order. We need to really take this plastic off and actually have more plastic than we had before. Uh, because the way that I had it attached to the frame wasn't sturdy enough. I need to have some excess and then that way I can really wrap this plastic as you see kind of around the bottom of the frame that goes underneath and not just on the top of the frame where the wind can easily blow it off and that was my big downfall this year with it. Uh, but we did have some crops in here that we harvested and things that have been growing in here. And that's gonna extend my season, this cold frame. So once I get this in order, the soil temperature in here is gonna be much warmer than other areas of the yard. So this is gonna be a nice season extension. I can get these cool oven crops, things like my brassicas, lettuces if I want, peas, carrots, turnips, radishes. I'm gonna get all that stuff in this bed. We're starting all that indoors, so stay tuned for a video on my seed starting. But uh, we're going to transplant all that in here. And this is going to be a nice start to the season in March 1st. So we're really only less than a month away. Once we have this stuff in the grounds, I would say sometime around March 15th, we can then really think about planting our cool oven crops, but under mesh. And that mesh is also going to help keep them, uh, keep the ground a bit warmer, keep the plants away from some potential light frosts. Um, and then also protect them from the wind. And that's what, where we're gonna grow things in this bed, like arugula and things like that. We're gonna have this bed um, covered with the mesh, whereas the other bed is gonna be covered with that greenhouse plastic. So that's sort of the plans here, guys, is to come in here very soon and do a couple things that are really necessary, you don't wanna forget about. And that's why I thought it was important to do this video for everybody, now that it is warmer. Um, definitely, you know, start thinking about that pruning because when the trees start waking up, it's not too late, but you really should have done it before that point. We'll do the dormant oil. We'll do the, tr the training into the espaliers, um, and then we'll do the planting and the seeding. So stay tuned for all that, guys. We're going to have a jam-packed spring here. Um, you know, as I said, I don't really expect that we are definitely in spring right now, but uh, certainly soon in the next month. Um, I can imagine us having an earlier spring because of the milder temperatures that we've had, but do cross my fingers for a little bit more of an extreme temperature um, that is going to kill some of this bug populations that we have here 
and lower the pest pressure for next year. Something else I want to mention very quickly is that the figs, because we've only seen 18 degrees Fahrenheit, I didn't even have to cut all these trees back. I could have uh, left every tree unprotected, 18 degrees Fahrenheit isn't enough to do any damage for the most part. You know, I would have had some light damage here and there, but I could have even left the fig trees on the patio in pots, could have left them all outside. I haven't even had to turn on the greenhouse heater once, um, which is pretty incredible. So March 1st, we turned the heater on full time. So we're about, we're about a month away from starting really the fig season as well. Uh, but it is kind of a shame and I don't really think it's a waste that this season really didn't end up working out well because we did chop them all back. Um, I don't regret anything is what I should say because I would rather guarantee myself that we, we keep the base of these plants alive to guarantee myself a large crop next year um, that I can sell locally. I think that's just a thing we have to do here every year. Maybe if it does become more mild as years go on that I can uh, afford not to do this, but um, we got lucky this year and we're still not done either is the point I want to make is that we could very well see 10 degrees, five degrees um, in the month of February. So a polar vortex is still possible. It gets a lot less unlikely as time goes on, especially after we pass the, um, the last couple weeks or the last week in January, now that we're through that, uh, the polar vortex chance decreases significantly. So we should be all right, but I do wanna see some low temperature come in and kill that bug population off. So thank you guys here for watching this one. Check us out on Fig Boss, Instagram and Twitter. Subscribe to the channel and check out the videos that are gonna coming up soon. Um, I hope to see you guys there. We'll check, we'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care, everybody. Um, yeah, have a nice day.